आज हमारे बिग आइडिया स्पेशल में एक काफी यूनिक और अनयूजुअल एपिसोड है क्योंकि वी आर गोइंग टू टेक यू इन टू द एग्जिलेटिंग वर्ल्ड ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर क्योंकि आज हमारे खास मेहमान है दिक्षु कुकरेजा और सी पी कुकरेजा आर्किटेक्ट वन ऑफ इंडिया प्रीमियर रिनाउंड एंड हाईली रिस्पेक्टेड आर्किटेक्चर फर्म वी आर एट द फेम्ड गौतम बुद्ध यूनिवर्सिटी इन ग्रेटर नोएडा डेली Dikshu Kukreja, wonderful to have you on the My Big pleasure. Idea. My pleasure. My pleasure. Really, such a pleasure, and thank you for taking permission for us to shoot at Gautam Buddha University. You're welcome. I mean, Dikshu, हम सोच भी नहीं सकता कि हमारे देश में ऐसे university हैं. Yeah, it it is a pleasure to see. It's something you see and you believe. Yeah, you can only see and believe it. Yeah. I mean, सोच भी नहीं सकता. This is one of the most beautiful architectural universities I think in the world. Yeah, it's been it's been <gasps> awarded like that. So great. Really it's tell us about the award. What? Well, it's won lots of international awards, uh-huh. but the most recent one 2 weeks ago uh-huh. was in London okay. where they've uh-huh. selected this amongst the best designed university campuses in the world. Wow. So yes, it's it's That's a great a feeling to see an Indian campus being recognized at such a Made level. Made in India branded yes, campus. Absolutely. Oh God bless you. That's what it's Thank about. You. Thank Achha, you. Achha, हमारे साथ share कर लीजिए your sensational story book in the architectural world. कैसे unfold हुआ था? Beginning से हमको बता दो. Okay. Well, I have always, mm-hmm. always been inclined towards architecture. Okay. And I remember as a kid mm-hmm. going there, monuments, sitting there, sketching. Mm-hmm. and so it's something that was i think running in my blood pehle mein passion tha yes it was Creative always tha, there tha, so tha. it was never about what tha. do i want to grow up and do okay. this or that it tha. was only this so it was great that tha. i got into school of planning and architecture tha. and that was, was it a, difficult it's a very competitive I exam very competitive I and i think it's got even more competitive now what are the numbers today ye puchna well uh, today they have an intake of 120 students okay. but they are lacks who apply So it's a tough, tough uh, admission. But I was fortunate. I yeah. got accepted, and actually, I topped the entrance exam. Okay. So I was lucky to get well, into the college. What we're looking at presently, and all of the other projects you've done, we can well imagine. Oh, huh. <laughs> so after school of architecture, mm. I decided I wanted to do something different and learn architecture, not just about buildings. but the built and the open space for okay. me the two go together Beautiful. it's like a marriage you can't think yeah. of just designing a building and plonking it somewhere okay. it's about yeah. buildings capturing the open space and then the ensemble between the two ah, creating that poetry it yeah. and then the so that's why i decided to go to a very renowned institution in the us <laughs> called the frank lloyd wright school of architecture yes, so that was famous. very interesting ah. because it was all about learning by doing which means we were just 75 70 Okay. people on the campus huh. 35 faculty and 35 students so one is to one and it was not about just learning how to draw about buildings but right. it was about maintenance construction work so the oh. moment i landed there my first task was to huh. build my own shelter in the desert so the, i had to make my own building oh. a to z so oh the best one can do at huh. that age is i built a little yeah. tent for myself so i was I living in a tent i was that time 18 No, I'm sorry. I was oh, 23. 23. I was 23. Okay. Wow. Uh, 22, 23. So it was an amazing experience. Huh. And then from there, I got into Harvard. Okay. So that was a complete university education <laughs> in a beautiful setting. There's nothing more glorious than Harvard. <laughs> it was great. It was an amazing experience again. I, I have to share. This is interesting because I've met you, and you're only telling me now you went to Harvard. They generally say any Harvard graduate. I'm right. not talking about the other Ivies. Right. Within a minute, if they've not told you they graduated from Correct. Harvard, you have to wonder. You're very modest. <laughs> so, what was the Harvard experience? Like? Harvard experience was just amazing. It was another world. Yeah. I remember the very first introductory lecture that we got from our dean was that, look, okay. you're here for two years. Huh. Remember, 
Whether you work or not, you're not going to fail. All of you are going to pass because it's we who have taken the decision to select the best of the best. So you all are going to pass. The matter here is that you have to learn more from each other than you learn from the faculty. And that ending ended up being such a true experience. What a narrative. So it was amazing because there it's all about collaboration, collaborative yeah. learning, ideation, thinking wow. together creatively. So Very that nice. was an amazing experience. Nikshu, this is really, really, I mean, just so, so phenomenal chatting with you and chatting at Gautam Buddha University. So, Dikshu, um, so you did Harvard, then uske baad kya hua tha? So, from Harvard, <sighs> after uh, my studies there, I wanted to work with a renowned architect. Correct. So, I worked with an architect, Kevin Roche, who's designed the UN Towers and the Museum of Metropolitan Art and things like that. So, it was great to work with him. Right, right, and right. then, after that, I uh -huh. thought, you know what? Huh. I want to go and live in Europe for some time. Oh. So, um, I moved to huh. Paris. Okay. And okay. I got a job there. Okay. And I worked for a year there. I didn't get much pay, my okay. salary was nothing literally, yeah, but yeah. the architect I worked for hmm. had promised me that look I'll give you the experience of your lifetime wow. and he lived by his promise. So he took me around every weekend hmm. around hmm. France showing beautiful hmm. places. So it was it was an Learning experience that, absolutely. So that was an amazing experience to live in France. Your journey has been exciting. Very, huh? very. I mean, I, I, no regrets. Yeah, no regrets phenomenal. Acha, or Jabba Bapasaya and the type of projects you all have done from the US Embassy, Finnish Embassy, IIM Lucknow, uh, the Delhi Metro. Like it's, it's so interesting because they're so unique, they're so diverse. Right. How right. did they all unfold? How did all this? You know, uh, after I came back and joined, my father had been running this illustrious practice and he is such a visionary himself. He, he is really the true uh, sort of icon of architecture. And uh, my experience was that I wanted to do niche projects. So okay. for me, it was about a uh, not being restricted to being branded as a certain typology architect that okay. you only do universities or you do only schools. I wanted to explore the spectrum of architecture in terms of different building types. So you would say this was Dikshu Kukreja's USP. Aapke, aapke ye soch tha, ke yes, I, I definitely felt that. Uh -huh. And the other thing I've always maintained since I came back to India and joined was uh -huh. that for me it's not about the volume of work okay. or the number of people hmm. you have in your office. Huh. It's about the quality. quality because I always tell my team that we mm. are here for a certain finite period in this world right. but our buildings are going to live their lives beyond us so it's very important what we create yeah, has meaning and is powerful wow that's very that's really deep and really soulful acha aapke jo toughest project right abhi tak jo hua hai right would you say Toughest project. That's uh -huh. a tough question, I think, uh -huh. because there are moments in the journey of uh -huh. a project when you are designing yeah. that you feel, oh my God, this is probably the uh -huh. toughest thing you've handled. Uh -huh. But then it's once the journey of that project is over, right, you look right. back and cherish. How so yeah. while we are on the campus here of Gautam Buddha University, Stop. there were times when I used uh -huh. to feel that my goodness, this uh -huh. is a very challenging project because never before, uh -huh. never before in the history of India yeah. had a project of this magnitude, magnitude and scale yeah. been built at that time. So we produced for uh -huh. this project, I remember, 20,000 drawings. And it's all been built oh in just God. three and a half years. Or kab, uh, kab build hua tha? When was it completed? This project uh -huh. started in uh, 2007 okay. and it was completed by end of 2010. So in three and a half years, a university huh. for five and a half thousand students with 131 buildings on campus were all completed. And that's a record that you have made in three Yes, it is. And that too, uh, with all due regard, for a government project to move that fast, where there were more than 400 contractors working on this site at one time. Who would you give the credit to that it got completed so fast? Mayavati? I mean, uh, she was the chief minister yeah, that's who had this. Yeah. The real vision, vision a to lady. create a global university. Can you so imagine? it was her vision which was being driven yeah. by a very, mm. very accomplished team from the government side. Oh. So the Greater Noida Authority, which was yeah. given the charge of building this university, huh. they were phenomenal. They made oh. sure they worked day and night. Huh. I mean, the team from the engineers of the yeah. university, they used to be working here sometimes 24 7. 
So I mean, they should incredible. get. How 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 large is this Kipling? This yeah. campus area is 511 acres, mm. and the total built-up area is 75 lakh square feet. So can you imagine in three and a half years, इतने जल्दी में इतने बढ़िया सा प्रोजेक्ट खत्म करने में कोई आसान चीज नहीं है. It's not. I mean, comparable huh. to huh. this scale projects have sometimes taken 15, 20, 30 years in our country. Interesting. So That's in very that sense, yeah, it's it's yeah. very refreshing yeah. to see. That way, there's a will. Yeah. There's a way. <laughs> okay, <It> that's na- <laughs> that's great to know in India. Yeah, yeah. We Indians are resilient, right? Right. In the absolutely. End. Okay. Tell me, um, you know, we you talk about urban planning or the smart cities. Urban planning me kya 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 naya cheez nikal. See to uh, benefit I- Indian India Indian now. cities mm-hmm. are really on the threshold of development. If you look around the world, right. how many such countries would be there huh. in a position which are at the cusp of development? The West has already the Western world, the cities are all established, okay. even in terms of built environment, new built environment, they only right. do renovations of buildings hmm. and some new buildings. Correct. While in India, the way we have grown and huh. with a 1.3 billion population, there's a lot to be developed. Huh. So I think from that point of view, right. there is so much in architecture, the huh. opportunities that are there. Right. But what we must remember is huh. that for us, we should huh. learn from both the worlds. The okay. Western world right. in terms of their uh, sort of being adept towards technology uh-huh. and, and being able to be, work in a very professional environment, hmm. timelines, cost uh, parameters, Correct. all these are very well maintained. Uh-huh. Quality. These are important parameters from the Western world that we yeah. can learn. Yeah. From the Eastern world, I think we can learn about how you can respect your tradition. So whether it is Japan, whether it is Korea, there's a China, lot to learn. Yeah. China as yeah. well sometimes. Thailand. But the fact that you know they are able to develop, Correct. not at the cost of tradition, but along with tradition. Beautiful, beautiful. What a learning curve our conversations with you are. So Dikshu, I want to ask you, a concept which is prominent here world over is smart cities. Right. So, chai India mein ho, chai abroad mein ho, aap gyan share kar lije smart cities ke baare mein. Smart cities, aisi cheez hai that it is a new concept coming into India, of Kale. course, but Kale. it has been there around in the world. Ha. And for me, when I'm trying to explain about what smart cities is, ha. sometimes I give this story about ha. the fact that for us in India right now, ha. it's like the story of the elephant and the four blind men. <laughs> Because different people, <laughs> different people have a different interpretation of what a smart city is. So at the moment, I think first of all it's a great vision that the PM has come up with to smarten our cities. It's high time we did that. Uh, having said that, I think smart cities is more than just information technology. It's more than just Wi-Fi. It's also uplifting the quality of your habitat. So whether it's water supply, 24-7 electricity, sewage, yeah. But more than that, I also feel it's about bringing an urban spirit, a spirit of publicness into our cities. When we go to the West, why do we relish Trafalgar Square or in New York, the Central Park or so many such public spaces we celebrate? Now here in India, we have those spaces, whether it's Connaught Circus or other parts of the city, other places, all of them have that, but we need to make them far more approachable, people friendly, appealing. more appealing, there should be public facilities, and safety is a very big issue. So if we do all this, and I think for this, it's as much citizen involvement. We can't just sit back over cocktails and say that, oh, nobody's exactly. doing anything to our cities. I think we need to do it ourselves too. So, so if we can all take it, it's a must. Saying, it's yeah. a must, which is, which is yeah. the way, only way. You can't wait. Do not do your bit and expect someone else to do it. So let's all smarten up and our cities will be smart. How amazing. <laughs> wow, that's so true. Acha, the aapki opinion, mein, expert opinion, mein, the next big architectural idea or wowsy component or factor. Yeah, I think about that sometimes. Oh, interesting. For me, uh, I think there's been this entirely for decades, huh. we've been uh, infatuated by the fact that we need to go taller, we huh. need to go higher, that land is more expensive so we go taller. Huh. 
Now that of course is yeah. going to happen and has been happening over the last 100 years. Okay. For me the next big thing I feel yeah. is that we'll start thinking about the same piece of land. Yeah. Why don't we go underground also? Jaise Dubai mein ho rahe. Jaise Dubai mein jaise 2000 saal pehle in China they could do underground Achha. cities Haan. and in 100 really? years ago they could do that in Montreal. Haan. I think we can do that very easily here. And by the way, that's Haan. very environment friendly as well. Haan, I was gonna so put, I see yeah, that as finished. the next big thing where we start exploring Haan. uninhibitedly the fact of Haan. how we can create underground architecture. Abhi filal mein hua hai aise kuch or, or khali idea hai. No, it's Haan. beginning to happen. Like okay. I said, there are Kaha? global examples. At hey, the global moment, India no, I'll tell Haan. you about another example. In Haan. Malaysia, Haan. our firm has just been selected amongst top five architects of the world to design an entire new Kuala Lumpur capital city. I don't believe it's commercial it. city. CP Kukreja, uh, architectural firm has gone global. Yes, it has. It wow. has been global. It has for been global. But okay. this project is wow. the largest of its kind in the world where we have My to design God. 10 crore square feet and the best part about it is that the client has accepted our idea of making it underground city as well. So this not just skyscrapers. So it's really this incredible. Is going to be incredible. And the jury oh, huh. comprises of the huh. Prime Minister himself as, and the Finance My Minister God. and the big shots of the out or, there. And how long will it take when it starts to start and end? Because this is really massive. Yeah. The way we see it hmm. is going to take another 10 years. So ideally, as the Prime Minister wow. there feels that we should be able to Finish that by 2025-2026. That is phenomenal. I mean, that's really, really mind blowing. Acha, aap itne successful architect ho with a global presence. You know, somebody who's who's going to go to college, who's graduating. In ke liye easy hai to become an architect? In ke liye easy hai to get a good job in an architectural firm? That's a good question because I do feel that this profession like any other profession can only sustain itself if we continuously have good creative people coming into this profession. So for the budding architects, I would say that A, there's plenty of scope. Okay. B, there is a lot of opportunity in India and there are various colleges and so many have opened and things like that. But what is most important is that it is a very grueling profession. And it's a very challenging profession in the sense that here you marry. Uh, there's a marriage between aesthetics, art, and artistic sensibilities and a real technology engineering mindset. So you need to have both, at least here in uh, in your mind, capability wise, then you can really do well as an architect. Like literally in sync and in balance. You need yeah. to, because it's yeah. really, you're not just doing something on a canvas, you're oh, building something correct. which needs to be built and be sustained. And utilized. And utilized. Yeah. So and yes, like it's, said, it's, it's utility, yeah. it's beauty, and it's Fantastic. sustainability. I mean, Dikshu, this has been so, so refreshing, such a learning curve, so inspiring. Thank you. Oh, thank you. you. It's a pleasure. Really, I've enjoyed, you know, understanding what the architectural world is all about. And we wish you all the success and glory, especially in Malaysia. Ah, thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Great thank to have you. had you thank on you. The Big My Idea. My pleasure. Thank well. you. Thank you. I end this episode with Dikshu's vision statement for Bahut Safa. A quote by Winston Churchill, no less. First we shape our buildings, and then our buildings will shape us.